preview for you guys also and uh, yeah we still have the holiday period but um, still the um, live streams are very well uh, looked at also after this live stream because yeah we are here in the Dutch time uh, it's now 8 o'clock uh, Central European time and of course other people maybe are sleeping but that's the cool thing about this live stream you always can check them back in this playlist uh, live streams on YouTube okay so uh, we ended last week with this blue 2 on the SFM FM sound and this nice guitar sound which is essentially it sounds very realistic but it's um, a totally synthesis using this FM um, feature inside blue 2 you see three oscillators and of course the sequencer is playing here and totally 32 steps is used. You see, it jumps here on the right side from um, 1 to 16 to 7 to 32. And um, there's another option what you can have here re trigger on, which means that each time that I start and let go of the keyboard, that it re triggers. That's down here. I also could put that out. Let's see how that works out with a, a sequence. So I play sequence. And then if I hit another note, it doesn't repeat. So that's down here, the um, re-trigger. You see, continuous walking now. on this re-trigger it retrails each time I hit again a new note so okay I'm of course checking also the chat room on the right side everybody who is watching now Hello, and uh, feel free to ask a question. And I wanted to give you a, a guys a bit of a preview because we are not in view, but in sound, a pre-sound. So because we are currently working very hard on uh, Punch 2, which is essentially a big operation. And um, guys, I have to see that it doesn't pop up in the screen. Okay, uh, I have to keep it a bit on the right side that you guys don't see it but uh, it's gonna be very cool it's gonna be uh, having a bigger user interface the size would be the size what we use with BIT and uh, go to so let's open BIT then you have an impression about the size so see BIT in this 150% version is even bigger than the blue 2 so um, this is the 150% version and punch 2 will have this type of size so uh, I cannot cannot show it to you because the graphics are still not ready and we still are very hard working uh, on uh, doing some final stuff so um, let's play it I have it here for you you can hear already hear some sounds So now if you listen to this snare, okay, let's see where it is. There we have something new. So I go here to the advanced panel. Normally the snare would sound like this. Okay. Let's see what it is. But now I use in this one, um, granular. And there we have several controls. So the original, sound is like this this is this original sample and then we use the granular and change some parameters 
and you, you can make some very different sound. Okay, I'm changing the so you grainy. Yeah, so that's granular. It's uh, you could put that also on your own samples. And another thing is maybe nice to mention is that uh, what we will have is of course these grooves you know from the original punch. So if you hit these notes which you see on my keyboard, it plays a groove. But what we also will do is that the first note, which is a very long bass drum, that you can play bass with that one in the upper keyboard range. Let's see if that, so you could have. That's very cool. So uh, the bass drum, which is on the C1, uh, the first part you also can have tuned. Of course, you need to tune the sound or sample you want to use and play it up here in the upper keyboard range. So this whole keyboard range of five octaves are fully used in this new punch to uh, section. And the other thing is that, um, okay, we have also this. Well, this is a new model we have. Uh, let's see, because I need to switch on pages here. One second. Let's see where it is. I don't see which it is. Let's see. Okay. Now this is a newer synthesis it's uh it's based up around harmonics so so you can make some symbol types so now i'm just playing around with a few of the parameters so this is more doing make creating symbol sounds but we also add to the if you listen to this tom we also have in the snare and the other models a overtone uh, in the model so this is an electronic uh, tom tom okay let's see which um i need to go back here on the other so here i have this uh, tom sound i need to go to the advanced panel and pick of course this sound and then I have an overtone so you can make some different uh, sounds using these uh, the newer models so there's much more to tell uh, it has the of course the four FX you know but this in the newer way we use FX sand so if you want to have a snare with a bit of uh, reverb, you can use that. And if you want to have a bit of more reverb on the other sound, you can use that by using the FX Sand setup. So it's uh, similar to what we do with uh, with Prisma. We have so new models, two new models, some uh, new filter types on board. And as mentioned, you can play in the upper keyboard range to first pad and um, yeah, play tuned bass, for instance. So that kind of things are inside of uh, Punch 2 and then what also will be inside is Slicer. So if you have a drum you can uh, load it in, it uh, you can spread it over the pads, combine it with the other pads which have maybe synthesis and then replay it also by hitting one button or export this uh, drum loop uh, with the pad settings as a MIDI file. So. Uh, it's a big, big, big update and it's going to be very, very cool. Okay, so uh, that about a little preview audition of Punch 2. And let's go back now to uh, to Blue 2 because this month in August we have Blue 2 months. So, and today I mentioned on Twitter and also on Facebook that it would be uh, um, a Blue 2 and the magic of Prisma, of course. Um, Many of you already know Prisma, you see it here, and this is an empty preset. 
and if you go to the manager and you go for instance to the uh, uh, super pads there are already some very nice pad sounds simply only using Bluetooth and layering these, uh, these sounds so if I click here one preset I just take Bluetooth big, big layer one it needs to load it in and here you see three times blue is used so uh, the cool thing is if you only own Bluetooth uh, Prisma is, is great to use because Prisma you can request it uh, after register your Bluetooth or uh, you can request it and you can stack Bluetooth you can use uh, the presets but of course also stack yourself and what I will do later on is also creating from scratch some things uh, only using Bluetooth so let's check what this preset is I don't know I just picked it Okay, I shut down microphone so that you only hear the sound. So here I can press solo and the first sound is Bluetooth with a very nice choir sound. Then the second layer is a Solina type string. So this is more synthesis, very high, thin. Yeah, that's very right. It's a combinator. Uh, if somebody, if people know reason, there is combinator in reason, and this is equal to what you can do with a combinator in the reason lineup, where you also can combine several things together. And uh, so, and the third layer is, of course, um, I think strings, more classic strings together with real string. Oh, I mean real strings together with synth strings. By the way, that's a little trick. If you see my playing here, um, if you play pads, sometimes people tend to play everything very close to each other, but it sounds bigger if you spread the notes uh, more on your keyboard. So just like one bass here and just two notes here. Okay, I hit the wrong note, but uh, you get my point. So I take the G here and then. It's only two notes, so just by spreading you get really a So, um, so that's something uh, which, of course, if you have Bluetooth, don't forget to request your Prisma and work around with Prisma. So this is one of the layers. There are, of course, many on board and um, Bluetooth bells. Now I'm curious of that one. So lo loading, please wait. Okay, and see what that one is. Oh. Very nice. A, a bit of type of uh, reminds me of the D50, you know? It's also where I can hear a choir. So the second layer. Synth choir. And the first layer is this um, bell sound. So that's combined. So these are two Bluetooth combined. And the nice thing about this uh, Prisma is that, yeah, you save your preset and in a different song, you can load it in. Instead of using two tracks together in a, in a sequence, you could also play uh, once a sound and then copy the track and pick another 
instrument and stack it that way in your music program but in prisma you have it also yeah if you have once a nice sound it you can always use it elsewhere and uh, so you see it has some multi-control page this one closes the filter of the choir we can make a longer release or you say less bell so uh, yeah so you see um, blue 2 is in combination with Prisma really superb and of course if you have the Explore 5 bundle you can go even beyond that and uh, let's see what we have and simply pick one of the presets okay this one also used blue too so I'm, I'm lucky today I had each time the right instrument spacey sound So, um, yeah, I'm playing live, uh, after many years, I'm playing live again on an electronic music festival. And of course I will use Prisma a lot for playing also sounds or maybe also making some split points. I have a the main computer I use and I use then a laptop with an audio card for, and really treat this laptop as a, uh, as a synthesizer. And I will use a lot of Prisma because yeah, these sounds are very nice to be played live. Okay, I'm checking the um, the chat room on the right side. And uh, until now, no new questions pop up. Yeah, feel free to ask a question and uh, therefore I'm here, of course. Uh, Prisma, we need to update it, by the way, to have also big screen version that will be handy. Now it's only one size. But you see on my screen, it's pretty small, although I can work very well with it. But uh, sometimes I I need to pick my glasses when I'm tired. I need to check my glasses and then that works a little bit better. So um, let's give that a try. So, uh, so maybe an idea that I start from scratch. I'm going to the D4 preset and you see here the uh, D4 preset in the default bank. I need to click it. Here it is. <clears throat> See, everything is clear now. Then I would pick a sound from Blue 2. And I will ask now everybody, what si type of sound should I create? Or should I simply start? I had in mind to do something with the sequencer. Uh, and then with Bluetooth combining the sequencer or arpeggiator and that uh, and showing how you can do this in a different way also in, in Prisma. Okay, let's see. Terminator intro. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so a very bombastic sound. Okay, you know, let's use some fantasy here. So what I do, I go to the edit page of Bluetooth and um, sequence sound. Let's see if there is a good one, which is already a no, no. I take this purely as a. Maybe nice. So let's keep that one, the wave sequence. And there should be something which is uh, 
again blue 2 I go and let's open this one and let's do something with FM synthesis so very spooky let's go simply to a base and that base I will add it so I go to digital base okay it hits quite hard okay but it's not long enough so I need to make it grow so I shut down for a second I play this one now off and only play this bass okay so and this one we make that it uh, gets a movement so here I press record okay I make a movement play synchronize it to let's say sync to one bar and of course you don't hear anything happening okay let's play on loop I make it visible so edit position you see this is the movement but now I need to go back and see okay what is going on here the this is F M base and D and E are modulating F so let's see what happens if I use the volume on the Y movement oscillator E volume and oscillator uh, what was it again oh okay that was E D and E so volume E on the E on the uh, Y movement and on the X movement I take a uh, volume D so let's see what happens not particular exciting okay so I think we maybe should bring this down a bit so the um, the envelopes are working okay I shut them down so the envelope from D and E I shut them down now I can hear the movement and of course there are a lot of points let's take eight points Okay, so now I have a quite nasty sound. Maybe it's still too, too um, not grainy enough. Well, let's see what it does together with the uh, the other sequence sound. Okay, this is better now it gets a bit of uh, nastiness and we could have here a flanger maybe that is cool put a flanger on this FM sound uh, stereo delay the stereo delay of course I could use in Prisma itself so I keep here the make this sound a bit less so what I can do now here I have to steer to two sounds I go to the layer um, let's see this is all okay I go to the FX and FX1 I pick the stereo delay which means that I can use it um, multiple times so the um, the wave sequence also has a delay and you see stereo delay I can shut it off and use the delay inside um, Prisma see now it has a delay from Prisma and the same goes for this um, other blue 2 sound which is this uh
So it's a um, quite a nasty sound. And what I could do now is um, maybe tweak this FM sound a bit more. And uh, it has a phaser button. What how it would sound was a what popped up in my mind is a gator. So a um, let's see, it should be in here somewhere. Where is it? Oh, where is the gator? Even with my glasses on, I cannot find it. Terrible, isn't it? Hmm, it's hiding for me. Okay, then let's take something else. I can not see it. It's um A bit of distortion. And of course, the XY could be different. Okay, let's skip to one bar. I also could use this the um, panning. Tweaking it a bit more. It should sound a bit more dirtier. Let's see if I can. Okay, this is already better. So I have now two sounds for this. Uh, and of course, this is too static. You need to have something else which pops in and pops out. Um, this we maybe could do here on the. So we could remove here the bass line if possible. Let's see if that is possible. I'm fiddling around now. I go to the uh, sequence. This is a modulation. This is a wave sequence. Let's see how that works. I shut down a few stuff. Gator under tremolo. Okay. I open it again. Tremolo. Ah. Okay. This should also be serial. Not really. That, I think the other one was nicer. Okay. The distortion. Okay, I go back here and then maybe this F goes to the output and it could say, okay, no, not to the output, but go to a filter, filter A. And pick a filter there, let's see how that sounds. Okay, that's more nasty to my impression. A bit more random. So this is a bit more attention sound. 
So what I could do also now is in the uh, sound, this XY sound, use the um, speed control, the modulation wheel, to control the speed. Okay, so now I miss a, a an additional sequence sound which goes over it. So um, it well could be that it runs into nothing, but that's that's all about sound design. Is you start doing things and then suddenly it doesn't work out, and suddenly the sound is there. It's uh, sometimes hard hard to predict. So I pick somewhere a. <laughs> Okay, sorry, it's a bit loud. Yeah, that's not bad. So this could be a... Um this could be a very nice uh, chasing sound and let's save it for now in case uh, save preset and put it as uh, I will call it little chase and of, and of course now I found the pitch band of the modulation wheel uh, on this uh, sound, this wobble that it changes the tempo, not so handy. So I go back to this XY and instead of the modulation wheel, I pick the uh, pitch band. And of course, where is it? I must not forget to have the pitch band off here in the play mode. And then I can use the... Okay, and now the other sounds respond also to pitch band because yeah, you did I did layer, so I need to go to the other um, Bluetooth preset. Or what I can do also here in the layers to show you is that in the layers you have the um, um, MIDI filters. So I could say okay, filter here the pitch band. Now you hear that the first sound I played solo now doesn't respond anymore to the pitch band. Cool, isn't it? So now the uh, pitch band, okay, let's do this also here in this preset, in this layer, also here the pitch wheel filtered, and then it only changes the pitch wheel, the second layer, which is this uh, wobbly sound. Not bad, isn't it? Very nice. Of course, it's nice that we have, would have some dynamic changes as well. First, I look here to the third layer, what it is using as effect. And I think it has also stereo delay. So that one I can shut down again to save a bit of CPU because I can use also here the FX1 sand and put stereo delay on this sound. So. So it's this sound in the modulation wheel, opens the filter. So I could do it also in, in, in another way, but I think this is nice. So I keep that. Now, um, this is not bad. I use in total, so I'm now in the layers. I'm using in total now three layers, and um, I still not add the multi control page. I always do this on the last moment. <laughs> and um, yeah, we could add a baseline, but it's already a bit in this first one. Let me see, this one ha already has a baseline, I think. Uh, so if I play it solo. <laughs> 
Try it. Uh, kick a pedro. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Because you don't have drums inside of it. Yeah, we, I could use the uh, uh, a. Um, yeah, should we add punch to it? Why not? Let's see because that will show also something very cool about. Um, because if you go to the layers and you go to this uh, the keyboard layout, you see that the layout of um, punch can either be punch or synth. And in terms of uh, punch, it means that it triggers the grooves, which you can put on off here or the breaks. So would I, would I pick if I pick here one of the presets? Let's see. I don't know what it is, but. So let's play it solo. Okay, that one is also still solo. Okay, nice, let's see how it combines together. Um, are the four FX and Prisma using less CPU? Uh, yeah, well, it's well, the CPU usage is the same, but if you have Let's say in these three blue two in each uh, in each uh, blue two because it's a real a blue two what you load if you have a uh, stereo delay there stereo delay there and stereo delay there then you're using three times a stereo delay essentially it's not that much cpu with today's computer but um yeah it's still wiser to say for instance no or i picked on the stereo delay from prisma itself and i shut down the stereo delay in the plugin itself so now by using the avic sand i can use this now um, just one one stereo delay for three channels. It's like mixing, you know. If you have uh, mixing, you have ten instruments and all use the same stereo delay. It doesn't make sense to have each individual stereo delay. And especially if you use reverb, then it makes even more sense because in Prisma you have a very high quality reverb, and you could shut down the reverb inside the instrument itself and only use one reverb. So that's a way to save CPU. And um, okay, so now I have this layer and what I heard in this punch, I show you another trick, which is very interesting. So I go to solo again, and here we also have a velocity range. So I could also say that this B3, oh, let's see what this is. that this one only uses, if I hit the keyboard a bit harder, so break three only starts to play if I'm above, uh, let's say, velocity 100. Okay, I put it on 100. And now, and you hear this reverb sound. So with the velocity, you can add some, or this one. From velocity 75 and I can hear that this one also has a reverb uh, but let's keep it this way so now when I hit play soft I only have the bass drum this very big uh, and if I hit harder the reverse sound and if I hit, hit okay I was a bit too high I add this one to it. So that's also very cool. So with the punch, you have four grooves and four breaks. How we use them, that's up to you, but you can, by hitting a note, it starts triggering this uh, this groove or break, but you also have velocity settings so that the break uh, three and break four here kick in a bit later or for, not later on a bigger volume or you could say I take a different keyboard range for it. So it's very sophisticated. It's a very creative tool, this uh, Prisma.
So now what you can do, it's pretty busy. I don't really hear the... Uh, That's too much. This break four with the lower things, it's too much. I don't hear it. So maybe this one. Okay. So I keep this one. And then what I can do now is, of course, it's always wise to save it. Little chase. I save the preset now. Again, override it. Yes. And then now I can, I have all the four less. I can say, okay, let's do. Uh, less wobble and less wobble means that layer two goes down in volume so okay let's see how that works out Okay, so that is uh, fader one, fader two. Um, yeah, let's make the filter sequence. So I'm just picking now things. So let's see, this is this grain rain I used at a plugin and it uses filter A and filter B. Let's see if I change that, what happens. So I go to layer two a global filter frequency okay and i'll make it this way that it closes the filter it comes a bit darker let's see in the first synth if there's also a filter use yeah that i also could use so in layer one, I also could use the filter. And let's simply try out what happens from filter layer one, also the global filter frequency. You see, there's a lot of changes added to it. And uh, so this makes that you can make the sound a bit more um, changeable it's less wave sequence which is uh, this first layer this first layer I can say okay volume of this first layer go down and let's see what that happens <laughs> Yeah, then um, to my taste, when I open this one, I think the this green rain, this third one, also should be less loud. So let's also then change layer two, layer three, the volume. So I'm, I'm moving pretty fast now. And of course, I could say the last fader, I could say layer four, less of these drums. Yeah, you see, a lot, um, but maybe this one I would also do most likely the cut of frequency, change that a bit of the second layer. So now I would not, not name it last punch, but I would call it change sound. So more the general sound. So you see, now you have very fast, <coughs> excuse me, very fast a uh, 
a kind of tangent sound which could be used in in a uh, chase uh, on a uh, in a movie uh, some predators hunting each other open modulation wheel See, totally different sounds now. Yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, so I was a bit uh, freaking around, so I lost myself. I will save this preset now. And I will upload it so that you guys can download it from the info section below this uh, video. There's an info section there you can load it as a zip file. Copy it over um, into the bank folder of Prisma. Um, so here's the manager. And uh, yeah, if you go to the My Documents or Documents on the PC or Application Data, applications on the Mac, you will find Prisma and then bank folder and throw this preset inside the, yeah, one of these uh, folders, maybe motion picture you could select. I, I will throw it in an update then also in motion picture. So, um, sorry, click wrongly. I'm now in the manager. So yeah, you see here three times uh, Bluetooth used and punch. Um, it turned out to be a quite a nice sound, not bad at all. Um, so I'm I'm looking at the questions. Yeah, Prisma is totally uh, fantastic. Somebody said, well, I need to spend some more time with it. Yeah, the possibilities are very big. So if you combine four things together, it's wise that at the very end, if you have the basic sound okay, that at the very end that you add these four layers, that is the best way to work with this uh, multi-control page, which is this here. Then you have the layers and each layer has uh, the parameters you can pick from inside the synthesizer. This is the easy edit page. The keyboard layout, you can make split points or what I did show with the grooves for punch to trigger the, the, the punch grooves. And then, of course, we have the uh, the four FX. I use only the stereo delay now, and uh, yeah, the manager. It's a uh, it's a very creative tool. Absolutely uh, creative. So okay, I'm going back to questions. Somebody is asking when I turn off the reverb in blue and use reverb from Prisma. Was it safe in blue? No, you don't need to save. Uh, so if you save the preset from Prisma, everything is stored. You don't have to save the preset in blue uh, itself. That's not needed. And of course, then you could use the reverb in Prisma. And then um, if you would next to Bluetooth would have a different synthesizer like a BIT or Blade, then that one also could use the Prisma reverb. That, so that saves, saves CPU. Uh, but it depends also on the sound, of course. Um, okay, I'm checking here. <clears throat> so Prisma from that point is totally, uh, yeah, very cool. And what we will do uh, very soon, we update Prisma so that you have here this star feature so that you can give a preset a star if you like it, but also that you can so, uh, go to presets and that it isn't alphabetically, but it is um, in uh, in date. So then you see, so we can watch the presets on based on the date and that makes that it's e easier for tracking new presets. So um, so you see there's a lot of things inside of it. And uh, yeah, Super Pass are one of my favorites because yeah, there you can have some nice presets. I just pick another one here. You see loading, please wait. It takes a bit longer. It's oh, 
tries blue too, so that's a lucky strike again. Sounds like a trillion million synthesizer to my ears. Oh yeah, see question, the EQ in the affix section, is this per affix or common? Well, good point. Each layer has also a EQ, so that's for each layer. So you can, if you think I should cut a bit of low end or maybe add a bit of mid, each layer has its own EQ, you can put on off, but also a low pass and a high pass filter you can add. Each layer. So that's very very nice as a feature and um, here in the fx section you have four fx but below it there's a main eq which is on the main on the main output so that's also on board here in uh, prisma and of course we have a very good algorithm for the eq it's uh, comparable to um, the um, equality you will find in rpeq so it has a master, so in the ethic section is a master EQ. And in each layer, it also, each layer can have its EQ. And you can see in this sound, and don't use it at all. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, yeah, and in this preset, I see I had attack time, release time, change sound, change sound too, let's see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, I would say take your time with Prisma. Each preset has uh, a bit of loading time, but compare it a bit while what was by loading a sampler sound. Uh, it, it it's the case that each time it needs to load in this plugin with the um, with the current uh, parameters. Okay. I'm checking here. Yes, indeed, uh, five EQs and uh, one uh, uh, EQ on the main and each layer has a EQ correctly, yeah. Yeah, you can make split points and I think somewhere, so live on stage, so I'm not sure, Jamal sometimes have nice split points. I'm not sure if we have some. Let's see. Sometimes Jamal has the split name inside of it. Um, or right here, split. Okay, it's loading it. Multi control page using Vecto. And if we go to the layers and you go to keyboard layout, um, of course, I need to pick each of them. So this one is C3 to G8. It's down here now. So yeah, also in combination, I mean the sequence that it's playing now in Prisma is, of not in Prisma, in Vector. So if you would have a beat, let's see if I have a beat, you have it also MIDI time based. Of course I need to play correctly. So you can have split points, velocity switching is possible. Yeah, it's uh, 
and it's for free. So if you own one instrument uh, of the Rob Harpen collection, you can use it. So if you have Facto, you can use this preset. And of course, it makes most sense if you have the Explore 5 bundle, then you can load everything uh, inside of it. And uh, and in case you don't have one instrument, it still will load, but will not play this layer. So if you would have, for instance, if you would have Blue 2, and you would have loading Little Chase, this preset I made this evening. Let's click it here. But, um, it would load Blue 2, but will not load Punch. That will not play. So, uh, that, so if you don't have Punch, it would sound like this. And if you have Punch, it sounds like this. Okay, so um, yeah, in case of live usage, because it has a bit longer loading time, what you could do if you play live and you like these split points is simply use multiple tracks with Prisma and each track has its own uh, preset and then you go to the next pre pre uh, track for the next uh, song playing and uh, that's the way I do it live is that if I use Prisma is that I have multiple tracks because the moment you don't play Prisma it doesn't use any CPU it only starts working of course once you start playing it um yeah it's e-life so uh, some people are going to e-life that's cool yeah yeah it's um of course i'm i'm very familiar being on stage showing my products uh, for many people but this of course is another uh <clears throat> another lineup and electronic music and uh it's quite some work the preparation it's one hour live so it's uh, quite some work but uh, it's fun and what I said, I have my main computer who does uh, the sequencing. It also, uh, with using MIDI, it, uh, it it's connected to some of the hardware synthesizers I take with me. Then I have an extra laptop, uh, which I use as a synthesizer. And um, there I will play live also my stuff. So it's really a combination of software and also hardware. And hardware mainly because it's nice to look at on stage that you tweak live that would do tweak live uh, this modeler or play a solo on the um, the, the uh, beloved mini moke <clears throat> okay guys yeah we are almost at the end and um, so I will upload in a second this preset uh, from Prisma Little Chase it's called and you can try it out yourself and um, yeah, maybe there is still a question. Let me know, I can uh, still answer it. And maybe when I have a bit more finished, because currently I'm working on the fourth song of this live setup. Maybe that uh, someday I will show how I play live using um, the combination of my computer, using the arranger track in Cubase. That's a way for me, which is uh, to do f going from one song to another and in between to be able to to improvise and that kind of stuff. It's a bit the same like Ableton has with the uh, also a live setup thing. And um, yeah, I did ask um, a hangout with Jamal, but he did not respond yet. Maybe he's not in too keen in doing that. I asked him again, of course, and um, he has many fans, and the biggest fan I'm, is me, of course. So uh, it would be great if we could have him on a live stream. Okay, guys, uh, it was nice again, and uh, uh, hope to see you guys next week again. And uh, we go, of course, also next week. Uh, it's still August, so we talk again about Blue 2 and uh, dive into the fun stuff with this amazing synthesizer so uh, if you missed this uh, live stream maybe you're a bit late you always can watch it back in the uh, playlist uh, called live stream so if you go to my youtube channel youtube channel there's you see videos and the second one is playlist and that's the one where you can find the live streams
Anyhow, thank you for watching and keep wild, guys. See you next time.